What's going on guys? Nick Lessigore here, Exit 12 Homebrew in the house, in the basement of Exit 12 Homebrew. There's a lot going on. It is a Wednesday evening. Ditched out of work a little early. It's that week in between Christmas and New Year's. So there isn't a whole lot going on. May have just outed myself, NBD. There's a lot going on in the brewery right now. I am cleaning uh, the Robo Brew, our V3.1, the old unit that we have. Getting ready for a brew day with a couple of the guys from the Homebrew Club, BrewTubers, www.brewtubers.com. Hop on the Discord, chat with us. It's an awesome time, awesome group of guys, and we get to do cool things like brew on Zoom together on Friday, which is what about, I think, five or six of us are going to be doing. So I'm really excited about it. <clears throat> I'm gonna be brewing up. I didn't know what to brew. Brandon and I were racking our brains. We ended up coming up with an oatmeal stout. So uh, that's gonna be fun. I'm really looking forward to it. So I'm cleaning uh, the equipment for that. Uh, I have to eventually dial in, redial in our canner, uh, I think. So I have to do some testing on that at some point. Uh, we, th there's a lot going on. The kegs are full. The, the kegerator is full, except for pretty much the uh, Brown, apple cinnamon brown ale lateral cohesion which is uh, pretty close to kicking and then once that kicks we have our uh, weekend mulchings dry hop edition uh, we dry hopped uh, our blonde ale so that's going to be going on in place we also made some pretty big purchases which we're pretty excited about uh, but first let's check out some uh, some footage from our brew day where we brewed our belgian dark shrub so why don't you check some of that out Okay, looks like we're sitting at 050 for first runnings on the first mash. We're gonna get up to our strike water volume and then we're gonna mash in the second set of grains. All right, we're about to sparge, but really get back up to strike, strike temp uh, volume. Uh, which is 5.41 gallons. Right now we have 17 liters and we need to get to 20 and a half or so. And so uh, we're gonna sparge, sparge, get back up to strike volume with probably about a gallon to a gallon and a half. Uh, we're gonna pull off these grains, dump them, put the malt pipe back in, and we're gonna mash in with the second round of grains for 90 minutes. 
Okay, I'm gonna sparge with about three liters to get us back to the strike volume. So that was two liters. Go with one more and then we'll see where we're at. Actually, this is about one and a half. Okay, I just took another gravity sample to see where we're at, back up to strike volume. And now we're gonna mash in the second round of grains. This is the reiterative mash. Smells fantastic. And I added all the salts into the first mash, so there's no need to add um, a second round of salt. Although I will say, I don't know if I necessarily did that correctly or not. That's something that we'll have to learn. pH was a bit high. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, very, very similar to the first, we're gonna let this sit for 10 minutes, and then we're gonna start up recirculation. Okay, we're done with the reiterative re mash uh, on the dark strong ale, and we're gonna pull up the malt pipe and get ready to sparge. Okay, we're hitting the hot break now. Mixing this up, we're gonna start the 60 minute timer. We have no 60 minute addition. At 30 minutes, we're adding Laurel. At 20 minutes, we're adding Laurel. And then 10 minutes is where it gets a little fun. Looking at the numbers, our technical first runnings before we added our sparge water was 1.095, bang. Awesome. So now that this is boiling, I'm gonna take a gravity sample, get the timer going, and we'll find an idea, we'll have an idea where we're at for pre-boil. All right, I think there's 10 minutes left in the boil. We're adding a tablespoon of yeast nutrient, adding three star anise, and we're adding a Whirlflock tablet. The star anise should give us that licorice flavor, that, that black licorice flavor we're, look, we're looking for with those uh, Italian candies or cookies. Oh yeah, huge black licorice. We only added two star anise in the last batch that we did. We wanna up that a little bit. We got about 10 minutes left. Uh, I think that's it for additions. Uh, and then we're gonna cool this puppy down and take a gravity reading. All right, after the end of a 60 minute boil, 
the OG, we were looking at about 0.75, and we're shooting for like 0.84, 0.85, so we decided to extend the boil by a half hour. We would rather get alcohol than yield. Yep. Uh, right now, the yield is sitting at just under 24 liters, so we're not really losing a ton, but it, it'll be interesting to see what, what ends up going into the fermenter. We're gonna take a sample, we're gonna cool it down, and just see where we're at. All right, so we're gonna transfer, but first I need you to know, Brandon just paused live TV instead of muting it. Yeah. As if we need to watch what's going on every second. Listen, don't worry about it. We're getting ready to record. He hit pause on the game instead of mute. So it's not even as though I can talk to you and watch the game. The ref has his hand up right now and it's, and it's paused. <laughs> This is true. Wild move. I'm going to transfer this beer now. So while it was a long day, uh, it was a fun day. The reiterative, reiterative mashing was really fun. Um, got up to seven and a half percent on that beer. And in a unit like the Robo Brew, where we get like 70% efficiency, it was a little disappointing, uh, but that is uh, right at the low end of strength for a Belgian Dark Strong. So um, it, the beer turned out pretty well. Uh, you know, we just tapped our first kind of glass of it about a, a week ago uh, when Christmas came around. So just a few days actually and uh, it's drinking pretty well. Hot, it's got some heat, but it's drinking well. Uh, another big purchase we made, uh, a big purchase we made is the Spike Flow Pump. Uh, tried it out a few weeks ago on a brew day and um, it would recirculate for about 10 seconds and then stop, reached out to Spike. Folks at Spike are awesome. They're sending me a new pump. I'm sending that one back uh, and they're gonna take a look at it. So um, I'm looking forward to getting that pump back getting the, the new one back so we can try it out. And then comes the big guy. This, uh, I'm really excited to show you guys this. This is something we've been uh, talking about purchasing for some time now, so let's not even wait. Let's just pull it off and check it out. Kabbalah, bang. Bruzilla Gen 4, 65 liter. And I uh, also got a sight glass with it. It was on sale for Cyber Monday uh, at More Beer, and we got it for like uh, $650 or $640, which is uh, big time savings. So we had to do it, had to, had to do it. There was no, we had no choice from a fiscal perspective. So um, we've had this for a few weeks now. We're gonna set up a pulley system, uh, and then we're gonna get to brew on this. So I'm really excited. There's gonna be probably an unboxing video coming at some point when Brandon decides to pop over and uh, and we're gonna get going on, on brewing on this big boy. So that way, hopefully, we don't have to do any reiterative mashing. We can do one mash, throw it all in. So there's a lot going on in the brewery and uh, a lot to be excited about, and that's exactly what I am. So hopefully, uh, if I can get this video up before New Year's, have a great, happy New Year's. Hopefully, uh, you accomplished a lot in 2022, and hopefully you accomplish even more in 2023. L'chaim.